Hello, pre-calculus students. Today, we're going to learn a new way to write complex numbers. In theory, you either remember or you have reviewed what complex numbers are. And just for your reference, those are numbers in the form A plus BI, where A is the real part of the complex number and B, not BI, but B is the imaginary part of the complex number. <coughs> and I still have my Corona cough. So today we're gonna to learn to write complex numbers a different way. We're not gonna write them in terms of A and B anymore. They're not gonna be A plus BI. We're gonna write them in a new way. And that new method is called trig form or sometimes polar form. Let me uh, share my screen here. There we go. <clears throat> now here we have a complex number is in the form a plus bi, where i is the square root of negative one. That's our imaginary number. <clears throat> when we graph complex numbers, we don't graph them on the xy plane. We graph them on the complex plane, sometimes known as the argand plane. Um, the x-axis now becomes the real axis, and the y-axis becomes the imaginary axis. All of our trig functions still work the same way on this plane. It's just that without um, an i, how would we know that this is a complex number? So if we're graphing the number 3 plus 4i, we go 3 units in the real direction, and we go 4 units in the imaginary direction. That's why three is the real part, and four is the imaginary part, not four i, that's just how far we went in the imaginary direction, that's our imaginary part. If you have the real number five, you can write it as five plus zero i. Now that's five units on the real axis, zero units in the imaginary axis, since it's on the real axis, you know that it's a real number. So you notice that real numbers are either positive direct um, in the positive side of the real axis and negative numbers are on the negative side of the real axis everywhere else up here and down here. Those are um, imaginary numbers. <coughs> so let's take a look. <clears throat> Let's see, I should blow that up, shouldn't I? There we go. Let's take a look at the imagine at the complex number one plus i in polar form or trig form. It's known as root two cis forty five degrees. Now I understand you have no idea what that means. Let's kind of talk it out. Root two, cis, 45 degrees. Cis is not a, ma a mathematical function. It's just a shortcut. It means cosine 45 degrees plus I times sine of 45 degrees. And the root two is an, is an R for radius. So you'll notice that to get from the origin or sometimes known as the pole on the um, complex plane, you go one to the right, one up. This um, point here represents the number one plus i. What's this length? Think about it. How long is this distance? Well, if this is one, this is one. One squared plus one squared is two. Take the square root. This distance is root two. So that's where the root two comes from. What is this angle? Well, I've already told you that on the complex plane, all of our trigonometry still works. So this angle is the arctangent of one over one, the arctangent of one, 45 degrees. <coughs> so that's where the 45 degrees comes from. So if we were to take this number, root two, cis, 45 degrees, 
and try to convert it back into A plus BI form, we'd better get one plus I or something's wrong. So cis is just short, or cis 45 degrees is short for cosine 45 degrees plus I times sine of 45 degrees. And then we're going to take each of those numbers, multiply by root two using the distributive property. So the cosine of 45 degrees is root two over two. Same with the sine. So root two times root two over two is one. Root two times root two over two is one times i is i. So rather than going over and up like we do in rectangular or, um, rectangular form of complex numbers, we're saying what is the distance from the pole and what is the angle that that ray would make with the x-axis. <clears throat> so if z is our complex number, it has a real part and an imaginary part. <laughs> Again, the imaginary part is not bi, and that's very important. The imaginary part is just b. The absolute value, we write that, we mean the magnitude. How far is that number from the pole? So if we have the number 3 plus 4i, you can tell over three, up four, that's the number three plus four I on the uh, complex plane. It's five units away from the pole. So the absolute value or the magnitude of that complex number is five. <coughs> so our new way to write complex numbers, is we need an R and we need a theta. What is theta? Well, it would be the arctangent of 4 over 3, which is approximately 53.1 degrees. I like to go out to the tenths place on these angles. So if we wanted to check, well, for let's just write it in complex form first. It would be 5 times the cosine of 53.1 plus I times the sine of 53.1 degrees. And that gives us 5 cis. 53.1 degrees. Again, cis isn't a function, it's just a shortcut. It's an abbreviation, so you don't have to write all this. How do you know this is a complex number? Because of that I in the middle. That's our um, complex number there. So A plus BI is the rectangular form of a complex number. The trig form or polar form of a complex number is R cis theta. Mm -hmm. So we have a distance from the pole or distance, ah, distance from the origin and an angle. <clears throat> now, when we add complex numbers, we add their real parts together. Two plus four is six. We add their imaginary parts together. Three plus negative four is negative one. And then of course the I. And adding and subtracting in, or adding and subtracting complex numbers is very easy in A plus BI or rectangular form. Multiplying complex numbers, not so easy. Because to multiply these two numbers, you have to do the FOIL method. F is first, two times four. O is outside, two times negative four I. I is inside, positive 12 I. L is last, negative 12 I squared. Well, negative um, I squared is positive one, so negative 12 I squared is plus 12. Combine the imaginary parts, combine the real parts, and you get the answer 20 plus four I. <laughs> Not easy, not difficult, but not easy. Multiplying complex numbers is super easy in polar slash rectangular form. If you have one complex number, R1 cis theta one, 
and you have a second complex number, R2 cis theta2. To multiply them, you multiply the Rs, add the thetas. And there's a derivation of that in your book. You multiply the Rs, add the thetas. If you're dividing complex numbers, that's very difficult in A plus BI form. <coughs> You have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Simplify, simplify. In polar form, it's much easier. Divide the r's, subtract the thetas. So to multiply complex numbers, it's easiest in polar form. Multiply the r's, add the thetas. Dividing complex numbers is also easiest in polar slash rectangular or polar slash big form. You divide the R's, subtract the thetas. So let's see. <clears throat> I have a couple examples here. Let's convert both of these numbers to rectangular form, which would be a um, well. My bad. Let's convert it from rectangular to trig form. Well, two in the real direction, three in the imaginary direction. Gives us an R of root 13. This theta becomes 56.3 degrees. How did we get theta? We took the arctangent of three halves, and since we're in the first quadrant, we don't need to add anything to that. <coughs> now here we have negative two plus two i. Where did this two root two come from? Oh, well, negative two quantity squared plus two quantity squared is eight square root of eight is two root two so this distance here this hypotenuse is two root two where did the 135 degrees come from well you take the arctangent of two over negative two and that would give you an arctangent of negative one and that would give you negative 45 degrees but you can tell by looking that we're in the second quadrant not the fourth so negative 45 degrees has a 45 degree reference angle. What second quadrant angle has a 45 degree reference angle? Well, that's gonna be 135 degrees. Let's check our work. Let's make sure that we got the correct answers for both of these. To check our work, we rewrite root 13 cis 56.3 degrees by expanding what CIS stands for, and then using the distributive property. You take the cosine of 56.3 degrees. I'm probably not going to use a table. You, most of you probably don't know how to use a table because we haven't taught you. So use your calculator, multiply it by the square root of 13, and you should get two. Um, with some rounding error. Same with the sine of 56.3 degrees times root 13, you should get three with a rounding error and times i. Same for two root two, just 135 degrees. The nice thing with these videos is that if you don't have time to write everything down, why is that there all of a sudden? Let's see if I can get rid of that. Don't know what happened there. All right. Let's move this picture out of the way. <clears throat> so 
So if we want to multiply these two complex numbers, you can see again the FOIL method, and we get 3 plus i. Well, the first number, 1 plus i, you should be able to figure out that that's root 2, so it's 45 degrees, just by looking at it, right 1, up 1. Now, this next one would be right 2, down 1. You'd need a little um, trigonometry for that, but you should be able to get root 5, cis 333.4 degrees. To multiply those two numbers in complex form, multiply the r's, root 2 times root 5 is root 10, add the thetas. 333.4 degrees plus 45 degrees is 378.4 degrees. But that's more than 360. We don't like that. Let's just pick a coterminal angle, 18.4 degrees. So there's our um, first lesson in complex numbers in polar or trig form. If you didn't uh, write all this down because I went too quickly, that's the good thing about videos. You can go back and watch them as many times as you want or need to. And with me being back on the big screen, I'm going to tell you that's all for this lesson. Have a good one.